know, I can do it. Okay. Everybody's kind of muted. Yeah, we, um, I'm going to talk about that right now. Okay. Okay, and this is the first time we have so many people in here. Last, last week, I put everybody in the rooms. Um, what I would like to do when we do this is that we see each other spaces. Um, so for the two that um, I know you're out working, so I'm glad for that. And especially for An Anaya, is that how you say your name, Anaya? Oh, see, 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 yeah. So um, uh, um, it's just good that we see each other's places and uh, that we will talk to. The second thing is, um, if you, uh, you're going to have to get used to this. When you don't talk, um, turn off your microphone because some people have noise in the background. We have children and so on. And I want people to, uh, I want everybody to be talking uh, if they have something to say. And I don't want, I, I would everybody uh, have, have opportunity to say something. So it's important to me that uh, there's not just two or three talking, uh, I would like to get input from everybody. And because we're home, like Chandra right now, she's got a kid there, I want her to, to be able to say something. And if there's a little bit noise in the background, we understand that. We're all parents. We, uh, we have children that we need to take care of. But I, I don't want you to not talk um, while you have a child there. So um, if you talk, Turn off your, uh, uh, turn on your microphone, talk, say what you want to say, and then turn it off. You will quickly, if you're here every week, week you will um, learn quickly how to do that. I do a lot of these type of meetings, and uh, this is how we do it. We, we, we talk, we let the main speaker speak or whatever, and then I turn on um, the mic, I say what I want to say, and then I turn it off again. And it's not going to take long, and we're going to get used to it. Um, the other thing is, uh, I'm planning to do this every Monday night at exactly the same time. And I pick Monday night, and um, we're going to every week try to find new um, topics to talk about. So I would like for you guys to prepare for Monday night, whatever the, uh, the subject is. And the whole idea of this is that we work together as a group about that topic for the night. Um, we're going to be busy for about an hour and a half on the topic. So it's uh, from in, in central from 7 to 8.30. Then at 8.30, I will leave the, the table open for people to hang out here for as long as they want. So I'll leave the door open. I'm probably not going to be there at that time. If, if you leave, you can leave. Um, and uh, you can um, stay, and I'm going to turn my, uh, uh, I'll just walk away, and you guys can keep on going for as long as you want. Um, this night and every Monday night is for you guys to hang out with each other, about stuff. If you want to go into a separate room and hang out with a few other people, I'm more than happy to do that. Tell me you Donna and Chanda and Russell want to go into a separate room to discuss uh, whatever business they want. I'm more than happy to move into a, a breakout room and you guys can hang out there after the first hour and a half. Um, does that all make sense? Any questions? Tony Connie, it looks like you have a question. You know, okay. Um, I'm scrolling. I'm seeing who's here. I'm scrolling. Sorry. Okay. Um, and please, um, this is a learning experience with me. So I want you guys to give me feedback and tell me, text me, whatever, and say, Willem, can we do this? Can we do that? Uh, I want to make this thing as workable for everybody that when you leave, that you will come back next time and, uh, and find the maximum uh, help and the maximum uh, benefit from us as a group. My role in this whole thing is as facilitator, so I'm not expecting to talk the whole time. Uh, I'm here to just facilitate the whole conversation. We all in different, I mean, we're 20, 21 people, I think, and um, we're here to help each other grow and help each other learn. 
we're in different parts of the country. Uh, we can ask questions about how do you do it in New York? How do you do it in uh, Texas? How do you do it in Florida? So this is all in your guys' hands um, to make this uh, um, uh, uh, work for everybody and, and as good as everything for uh, uh, everybody. So it's how much you put in. Um, and I ask everybody to um, uh, put in the best they can because it will benefit you and it will benefit um, the other people. Can I have a thumbs, thumbs up of everybody? All right. Okay, so our um, discussion tonight is going to be, oh, hang on, I've got four people I need to get in here. Uh, all right. So, um, where are we going to start? Our thing is marketing. And um, who wants to go first? Who's got a question for the rest of the group? I need somebody to start. What, what, what do you guys do right now? Well, I guess I'll, I can start off. Hope. Well, yes. um, I, you know, we just started with a new program that captures, you know, more text through our website and such. And that's one thing we've started, but we've done, you know, since COVID hit, we have done a lot um, to try and get more community involved and not just generate traffic to our showroom and such, but to actually engage with our community and make sure they know that we are still here and stuff. I mean, is challenging for a lot of us. And so, I think it, just taking that effort to reach out and do things. We did a drive-through uh, trick-or-treat thing and had like 500 cars come through. It was great. Wow. And we gave goodie bags. as all free for the community. And it, we had our warehouse is about a mile off the main drag. And we had cars lined up all the way back to the the main road and waiting to turn in. So it was really a, it was just a two-hour event. Can it's we just, get some details on that? I want, I want to hear some details on your drive-through thing. I, I, that's interesting to me. Can you give us a few details? Don't give us all your secrets, but just tell us kind of what, did, how did you set that up? Oh, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'll share everything because you're not my competitor. <laughs> I am too, rock on. <laughs> um, what we did is we just did a Facebook promotion and we, we run a promotion with the schools. It's a fundraising thing. So we have all these old gift items and stuff we've purchased throughout the years that are, we sell to the schools and we weren't doing that this year. So I used some of those and made goodie bags. We gave away like fidget spinners and erasers and pencils and stuff like that. We uh, promoted on Facebook. We our, our, our warehouse has two gates. And so we have an entry gate and an exit gate. And they drove in, we had three stations. The first station they pulled up to that we spun the wheel for them and they got to win either grand prize entries or different coupons and such that we had. The second station is where the kids got their goodie bags and such. And then the third station was the grand prize thing. We spun there and I'm from Lubbock, Texas. So Texas Tech is uh, our big college here. And so we have these, uh, oh, to all this Texas Tech gear, like coolers and bats and stuff like that. And if you got the grand prize, you spun and won one of those or $100 off gift cards, things like that. And it's really, it was really amazing. We had a lot of good comments on Facebook about it and a lot of good relations. And now we're planning the similar type thing just for a, uh, a Toys for Tots drive, drive through drop off. Uh, was it just Facebook uh, people or did you, how did you market that? Facebook only, we posted just about every day for about 10 days prior. And that did boost about three of them. But like I said, we had, I think we, Katrina could verify for sure, but I think we went through about 600, and, 600 or so goodie bags that night. And there was one goodie bag for every kid, but some of the cars came with three to five kids in them. Wow. That's an excellent promotion, by the way. I just want to commend you. That was very original. I, I like that a lot. That's great. You did good. Thank yeah. you. It was really well received. We're just looking for new ideas going into the winter and, you know, more so how to engage with our customers, even if they don't call when they get on our website, so we can identify them and figure out who they are and, and maybe start a conversation with them. Did you brand the actual bags or how did you get your information onto that? Did you put cards in there? 
Did you put a stamp on the outside of the bag? Did you wrap the candy? What did you do to get your name on there? Well, one thing, we didn't do any candy. We did all just like little just toys pictures. and goodies and such. Okay. Um, we had business cards, all of our coupons. I've got a, a small print shop in-house, so we have a, a 54-inch printer. We can do all of our own vehicle graphics, things like that. And so we That's a handy there. side gig right there. Yeah, it finally paid off, I guess. But, you know, we, we, we made a bunch of little almost uh, postcard-sized coupons for different things like half-price concession with a rental of inflatable and, you know, 25 off and then grand prizes and stuff like that. So that was given to all the adults along with a regular set of promotional flyer. And then the goodie bag, like I say, it was a generic goodie bag. I just got them a Dollar Tree, just to the yeah. lowest cost possible because this was 100% free giveaway. Uh, Katrina, Katrina, I see you smiling. Well, um, tell us a little bit from your side what you saw. We can't hear you. Sorry, I'm new to Zoom. I'm learning, I'm learning, bear with me. <laughs> that is what this is about. Uh, no, I mean, it, it was really well received in our community. We did, we probably had, you know, three, 400 cars come through. Um, every goodie bag did have a business card in there um, along with coupons and all that, just trying to get our name out there a little bit more. It's amazing, you know, how people will tell us all the time, oh, we didn't know you'd done this or we didn't know you'd do that. So we're just trying to let them know, hey, we do a wide range of you know, events and everything. So it was pretty good. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, are you going to track uh, how many people from that, how are you going to track how many people from that specific event are going to book from you? Uh, probably through the coupons that we gave them. Um, you know, we offer some pretty good coupons. So when they call in, they have to basically kind of surrender that coupon and that will let us know that that's where they got it from. I, I, let, me, let me reiterate in there, it, it, was, it was not only just promotional, it was just about doing something for the community because the kids have been caught up and with, are tied yes. up with COVID, they can't trick or treat or anything. So we weren't, it was not just, I mean, we took advantage of the promotional side of it, I think. And like Katrina said, the coupons were specific to this event. So if we get them back, we, we know where they came from. But it was more so just... Uh, yeah, I guess reaching out to the community, I, I was greeting the cars as they came in, just every car through it. And I can't tell you how many people just thank this for doing something and keeping it safe and easy and, and quick for them to get through. So when you printed those uh, cards, they have actual numbers on them or were they just all generic and then as, as a redemption card itself or were they actually individual numbered to make a difference or, or were they targeted? I guess. I no, guess what I'm were, trying to say were, is they were they were all generic. There was no numbering system on them, and uh, yep. I didn't sign them. They were all different colors, but like I say, they were specific to this, and not not a, a card stock or anything that somebody'd be able to replicate very easily. And they did have certain expiration dates and such on them. But they were all they were all the same level, so there wasn't different different levels of discount that kind of thing. Yeah, like I say, we had anything from free concession with a rental of inflatable to $50 off a drink machine with rental or karaoke to um, just $25 off any order, things like that. And so it, it was a, a random thing. Just uh, we just kind of came up with it and threw it together in a couple of weeks and it worked out really well. Um, any other questions for um, Donna? <laughs> Sorry, uh, I have to do that. <laughs> um, but I, one thing that I've seen is uh, everybody is getting those uh, um, message thing on their on their um, apps and on their websites. Who has it and how is it working out for you guys? Because that is a way to attract people to start to communicate with you. So um, who's got it? And um, let's hear from you guys. I uh, I have it on my website. I have Talk Two currently, mm -hmm. but uh, I've used Facebook in the past. Sorry, I'm talking loud. Um, and 
I think it works out really well. I talk to a lot of people online. Um, I answer a lot of questions that maybe people can't find on the website. And ironically, while they can book online, they tend to book um, through the chat than they do doing it themselves. It seems, it seems to me that people in our industry, our customers, at least the backyard parties and stuff, they'd rather talk to people. They're not a online book ordering kind of people, even though they do that through Amazon. Um, they want to talk to somebody. Um, I think I think part of that is because we go to their house, we go to their place of employment, and so they like to know who's coming um, and everything, and get to know the people that are showing up at their house. So, um, do you think they call you more, or do they text you through that chat more? What was? How did you get there? Uh, they definitely call a lot more than they use the chat. Um, a lot of people, I, I try to text more than I call just because it's easier to, uh, not, it's not so intrusive on my time. So I'm 20 minutes on a phone call with somebody while I'm missing three other phone calls while I'm chatting or texting. You know, I can text two or three different people at a time. So I, I try to go that route over phone calls. And with today's climate, people tend to be okay with that. Yeah. Anybody else? I use the talk to also now I have mine set up to where it's not live chat because I don't want to be tied down to that all day long. So what it does is they'll send me an email and then I can turn right back around and send an email back. I book a lot of parties off of that though. A lot of parties. I average like e even right now is our slower time and I'm averaging about 20 talk to messages a day. Wow. And when you were busy you know, for this um, period of the year, um, what in October when it usually was our business time? October was really, really busy for me still, even though it, it wasn't for a lot of people. It was for me. Um, we didn't have all of our church events we normally had, but we took on a ton of backyard customers, a ton. So we stayed really, really busy in October. And during that time, there was some days I was averaging 40, 50, 50 talk to messages a day. And so what I would do is just sit down an hour and just start answering them. Right as we started this, I answered four of them. Wow. But I do get a lot of the talk to messages. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's something that I think we're going to uh, put in because I think people do it, but I didn't realize it's it so good. Um, it, um, I'm kind of uh, amazed. That, that is really yeah. amazing. I think it's a little different. I find they do it at work. Mm. Sorry about that. Area, just ours. We've had talked to for a couple of years, and we have very limited participation in it from our site, and it's on every page and such. Um, I just signed up for a different program that you know they request coupons and such, or you know sign log register with us to get coupons. It's just name, phone number, and email address, and when they get there they're automatically sent a text message and it's opened up a lot more conversations to people that are just visiting our website and not necessarily ready to engage or are just uh, getting started on their search. But, you know, we're a little different than a lot of people in this group just because we have a plethora of, of equipment, not just inflatables or party. We're wedding and Kinsieta and, 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 and big tent vendors and such too. And so it's really, uh, they get lost on our website trying to find stuff. So this new program's really helped us engage with them a lot better. Anyone else? They must be more than two people. We, um, just like Shanna said, and Tony, we used to use Talk a couple months ago. We switched to, to Event Hawk, which is the pop-up that generates either a coupon or just some kind of conversation button that if the customer fills that information out and they don't check out through, we have ERS, so if they don't check out through ERS, it sends an automated text to the customer or an automated email based on the time of day. If they respond to the text message, then it goes directly to our phone. And, you know, at that point you're engaging in a conversation. I've heard, you know, customer, if I ask them why they didn't check out or what, you know, made them stop, They've never rented an inflatable before. Uh, do we provide water? I mean, there's a 
variety of different things that stop someone from that checkout process. And we've found that, you know, having that, ours is actually a text feature, not really a chat feature, but having that feature um, kind of stops that process of, you know, forgetting about it or price shopping. Um, and then you're able to engage and have, you know, a more personal interaction with them. And that's resulted in a much higher conversion rate um, than what we've seen in the past with, with even talk. Anyone else? I have a combination of everything. It's kind of a weird, but uh, I set it up myself. But I, I don't use talk to, I use what's called OLARC. It has a little more control for me, it gives me a little more control. Uh, again, it's on my website so they can, they can message me from there, right? But I, uh, I don't know if anyone knows about Slack. So it's kind of like a major software company. Uh, and I have everything that we have for our company and all our numbers is connected to Slack. So if someone messages me on our website, it goes to our Slack channel. So anyone on our team can respond from there. I can respond or someone, my personal assistant, in another city can respond, it looks like it's one conversation. If anyone calls us, it lets us know on Slack and they send them an automatic text message. We don't even answer the phone number. It lets them know, uh, Corey helped me, we're writing out a script of what to do, right? Automatically send them a text message, they respond, the machine automatically texts for us without ever getting anything. For most part, we get all the information. Very few do we get someone say, hey, I'd rather have a call than a text, right? Because like you're saying, instead of 20 minutes, I'd rather, of machine send out the text. And then if someone texts us also, it also takes care of all that. So it's all in one place for us that we build and it's free for us. Uh, like all our phone calls come here and they, they get automatic text messages. All our text messages that come in, they get automatic text messages. All our messages on our website come to this place and multiple people can respond. So everything's set up to, it's not just depending on one person, but anyone on the team that have access to it, they can all respond and it looks like it's one person in the company responding at all times. Anyone else? Mark, do, Mark, do you use any of those? Because I know you, you do painting and stuff. Do you use any um, service like that? No, actually, um... I think in 35 years, I've never marketed either one of these businesses, and I've succeeded pretty well. Um, I did a lot of, uh, I guess if you're trying to talk, are, are we talking about marketing to get business or to promote specials? Because I kind of missed the beginning of this table. Yeah, no, it's, we're talking about marketing, how to attract people. And one of them is that you respond when people get there. That's what we're talking about now. Yeah, I I don't think I've spent a dollar on marketing uh, outside of phone book advertisements, which is absolutely absurd back in the day. Um, pretty much I go on, uh, I went on word of mouth um, with my painting company. Uh, I did signs on the cars and trailers, obviously, but as far as marketing the business, I don't, I don't think I've done anything that I've, that I could think of considered marketing. And what some of these guys are mentioning, I haven't got a clue. Um, like what Jana was talking about, I, I have no idea what that is, what she was talking about or how it works. Um, do I want to do that now? Um, I've considered it, but I would have to give up one of the companies. I couldn't run two of them full blast like that. You know, if I started marketing heavy, I, there's no way I could run two of them. Um, so I, I am kind of want to listen to everybody, see if there's some simple type of marketing solution that would not um, overblast me with work. Like I don't want to all of a sudden have, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of people like to have, say they got 30, 40, 50 rounds in a weekend. I particularly wouldn't even want that because I can't get the manpower to work it. I can't um, get reliable people to, to work it. So I, I want to try to keep it contained to what I can control. So if I can get 15 rentals in a day, which I pretty much average that, I'm happy. Okay, um, so I, I know Alex, I think you wanted to say something. So 
was going to ask about the uh, the chat feature because I know you know busy season when everybody's gearing up for for their insurance in March April you know we have a bombardment of phone calls at the same time and you know I know from a service standpoint people get frustrated because they're just leaving voicemails but you know, we do get back to you but still they they want to talk to somebody right then uh, when they make the call so I'd be interested to see if if people would use that chat feature if it meant that they could get a hold of somebody and like you said talk to two or three people at the same time um if that would help so i don't know i just kind of wanted to gauge to see if that was something that people would do for their insurance if if not just for uh you know a bounce house party because I, I mean i feel like that would be a great tool for us at least i don't know what do you guys say I think, Alex, I think it would be, I think it would be a good tool. Like I don't use Casio, but I use another uh, agent and it's like, there's always like a two or three delay day before I hear back from them. So just that little personal touch, like, yes, you know, um, we see that you're trying to get in touch with us. We're going to make a note and follow up instead of just days and days without communication you know what i mean and just did they get my message are they going to return my call i think it kind of breaks up some of that stuff um and customers seem to really engage very freely with it uh you know just in the limited time that we've used it we i i was worried that it was too intrusive initially and as we asked for feedback we've had no negative uh remarks everybody is raving about it so I think it, I think it would, you know, could possibly be good. Yeah. Uh, every time I've ever used it on like a big, like auto insurer, like USAA I, that comes to mind that, you know, they have the chat feature and, you know, I'm always afraid to try it cause I'm afraid it's going to be somebody that I, I don't know or trust. So, I'm, you know, I, I just, also I was curious, but from a responsive standpoint, that makes sense. Anyone else want to talk about that or how can we move on? Yeah, I was just curious, anyone that has a chat feature, um, have you guys like uh, just kept track of maybe the same questions that are asked over and over or tried to actually um, proactively learn from it and try to adapt your website to better answer those questions? or the common questions or issues that people may have? Who's using it? I don't tend to get any common questions on that, but we get a lot of stupid questions. I mean, just a lot of crazy and, questions on the talk that we don't get other places. And, and that's kind of what we were too. I mean, it was, it seemed that we got you know, more messages that were just stupid and wasting our time. So we actually completely moved away from the chat feature. Um, and about a, I was just looking at our reports and about a third of our customers actually book online. So that, you know, leaves the other two thirds that either still call in or text message. So. Hey, Corey, could you program it? So that way it, it auto populates like a frequently asked question or something that you would think that they would have a question that maybe um, the website doesn't. You know, I, I think I think Talk to actually had a, a like a shortcut feature when we were using it, where um, say you had, hey, we were just wondering what your pricing started out. I think you could actually almost type a short code, you know, in your in your uh, program, and it would almost populate that. So I, I I think that was an option. Is is that kind of what you mean? Like say they ask about coverage, or you know, you could you know the the keyword could be coverage and it would kind of just give you the general answer. And I think right. talk.2 did have that, I do believe. I'm just thinking of like LinkedIn where they, you know, if you get a notification on LinkedIn, they give you almost like an automatic response, like congratulations or something. Maybe, you know, if you were typing in there, like, do you, at least in my instance, be like, do you need an additional insurance oh. certificate or something like that? I see what you're saying. So without you actually having to respond to it, then almost right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so then you kind of, I guess, weed out some of the questions that 
you know, you could probably find it out on your own if you just, you know, had the, the information. But if you really did need to talk to somebody, you have like the next set of questions or if they really wanted to type that custom type yeah, of you, question. You know, I, I know Facebook and the, the chat bot, um, I believe is what it's called. It, it's becoming pretty, pretty reactive in that sense, you know, and it actually kind of, like you were saying, it almost walks you through it. Um, you know, kind of like all the, the old teleprompters when you'd call on a phone, you know, press two if you want sales and, you know, it, it kind of walked you through that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. I, I think that would be, I just don't know that it has that capability. But if it's, yeah, and, and I, I think I'm, I'm, I would rather not have to talk to anyone when I do anything, um, you know, which is kind of why we were sold on ERs to begin with is just, you know, that whole online booking and, but might be something yeah, definitely to look into, like you said. All right. Um, moving on, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys do for marketing besides what um, uh, uh, Tony said, Tony slash Donna? Uh, I, I like that idea. What else are you guys do to... Uh, uh, due to uh, do, do advertising beyond um, Google AdWords. Um, what I would like to hear tonight is some things that you do like Tony outside of the norm to attack people in this uh, COVID environment. I, I need to get at least three people with three different um, uh, ideas. We're like 28 people here, so we must have a few ideas. Beverly, yes. Go for us. It may be silly. It's kind of small. Yep. Um, but this mm -hmm. year, we did pins. I don't know if you see them. So it's got a stylus on the end. And it's a really, really good pen. So now going around to house to house, you know, people don't want to use the same pen. So we give them a fresh pen to sign their paperwork with, and it's their pen and has our logo and stuff on it. So just this small, but people have really gone kind of crazy over the pens. Did, you said you go house to house, or have you actually tried approaching a business for that no, as no. well, like a restaurant or? No, when we go to set up, when we're going to oh, I... the, the person's home to set up their inflatable. Gotcha. That's actually a really good idea. Uh, it's kind of like when you go to vote, when you went to vote this year, they would give you one pin. Exactly, you got the pin. And then when you put it, they, you put it into a separate dish, obviously they clean them all, but you get a new pen every time. Or if you go to the doctors almost, anytime you go to a doctor now, they, they give you a new pen, you sign yourself in and you keep that pen. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually pretty good. Which actually, now that you mentioned that, it reminds me, we did at the beginning, we did magnets, little mm -hmm. magnets that when we would, they would sign the paperwork, we handed them a magnet with our company name, the logo and everything on it when we yeah. first started out for, and which would sit right on the refrigerator. It's always there. So the pen, the pen thing, I like that, especially with this COVID thing and everything happened to be safe and clean. That actually is a really, that's actually a smart idea. Yeah, what we do is uh, we send out a, a magnet that has a count. And like everybody knows, the magnets usually stay on. We we went back to customers' houses and they had our magnet with the calendar year like three years ago. You know how we all have magnets that never get taken down. So we generally um, send out magnets to every customer. And then uh, they can always reference us and repeat back. That helps us uh, to keep our customer retention. Uh, so that's a good one. It can get a little costly, uh, but it's still like you know under under two dollars, three dollars per customer. Uh, so it's not that bad. You're getting you know a couple hundred bucks. Beverly, what's the cost on them pens? Roughly. Oh goodness, um, they're actually on closeout. Um, through National Pen Company, I want to say forty nine cents each, maybe. Yeah, Look at yeah that, that's a, that's a very, very good inexpensive way though to make a, a stand. 
people mm -hmm. be impressed with that. That's very impressive to do that. Mm -hmm. I think if you, I think people would appreciate it too. Mm -hmm. We yeah, did like a small, small, silly maybe, but you know, just a giveaway. We did pins too this year. We did pins, and then we did like a. I wish I had one in front of me, but we had a drawstring bag. We put a business card in it, and then we did um, jelly bracelets. Just, you know, a little, as an appreciation, you know, token of appreciation, we see, you know, kids with the bags and the bracelets and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we're talking at a dollar, less than a dollar per customer, but we do, we give those um, at every drop and we've, we've heard great feedback. You know, people like the pen because it's their pen to use, you know, if they're signing the contract, they keep the pen and then they have this little bag with the glow in the dark bracelets or whatever. We just tried to think out of the box, you know, this year to kind of show some appreciation because things have been so crazy and, you know, a little bit goes a long way. Um, so we've gotten, you know, a lot of feedback about that. Um, like for us, I, I think the marketing that we've done is really, really about getting our name every single place that we can <laughs> so of course our uniforms uh we have beanies we have hoodies um we have banners we have yard signs we have pamphlets um we uh we do do sponsor sponsoring events a lot we're very community involved and so i know there's a, a everybody's gonna have their own opinion about doing a sponsorship because you guys know in this industry, everybody's asking for a discount or a donation or whatnot. Um, but we take that as an opportunity to go and get to meet all the key players that are putting that event together and going to the event and meeting the people there and having fun with it. Um, and in that sense, um, we have seen people coming back to us and recommending us to other people. As a matter of fact, we did a sponsorship for a tent and that's uh, how we got one of our Christmas light installation jobs uh, because I was just talking to them about how we had just started that. Um, and so in our community, it's a lot of word of mouth. Um, so a lot of people just aren't used to being on Google, which is a lot easier for us because we don't have to pay that much for Google ads because there's no competition here. Um, we do radio advertising and a lot of people are going to have their own opinion about if radio advertising actually gives you a return. <laughs> um, and it is hard to see the conversion rates on it. But what I, what I'm trying to do as far as um, getting our, our marketing, our name out there is, being recognized whether or not they're purchasing from us um, so like we go on Facebook marketplace we go and we post on um, our our Facebook page and we post on those support small businesses groups as well um, and um, people start recognizing the name so um, let's say you're thinking about renting a bounce house you hear us on the radio, you see a banner, you see our truck driving oh, yeah, by, um, you um, see another uh, marketplace sign pop up on your you know, media or whatever. And then next thing you know, you're like, somehow jumps in tents, finally clicks in your brain. <laughs> and so um, that's kind of how we market things. Um, we do a lot of like Facebook Live and stuff. And we I finally like I'll meet some random person that I've never met before. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I've seen your truck around town. Or, oh, yeah, I heard you on the radio. Um, or, oh, yeah, you know, so uh, that's kind of how we're doing it. It does cost more money than free um but this is our full-time job um so we're trying to get it to where um it's a recognized um logo we've rebranded ourselves to where the logo is a lot more um corporate but you could actually it sticks out 
Um, so I feel like logos are a big factor when it comes to like marketing, um, slogans, all of that stuff. Um, but I mean, I guess when I said marketing, I, I want to see how people are actually getting their product out there when it's not um, your normal common bounce house or combo bouncer. Um, there's just so many things that you could purchase in the industry that's new and it's new to your community and they've never heard of. So how are they going to purchase it if they don't even know about it? Um, and so like, that's one of the things that we're known for is we're bringing in the new stuff. So like new hot item, and then I'll say, we will post it in a week and we're going to give a free rental of it as long as you share the post. And then it just goes like fire on um facebook like we're the first people that brought the phone machine and after us it went so good on the social media page that two other companies decided to buy a phone machine <laughs> in town and i was kind of mad about it because there is like cheap <laughs> um and so now they're trying to compare it to our stuff it's not the same thing um but um i guess like that that was my question, like how you guys market new items that you guys get excited about at IAPA, you buy it and then it just sits on your shelf. <laughs> when you said you advertise on Facebook Marketplace, are you paying to advertise on Marketplace or are you just posting ads like from your personal page? Yeah, I'm posting from my personal page. So we have a lady in the office and she does all Canva. And so, um, she'll do a, a Canva post that basically has our website and then it has um, like whatever it is that we're advertising like tables and chairs or whatnot. And um, she does really good. Um, I have to give her some direction about like what we're gonna advertise that week, um, but she's good at designing a post. Um, and uh, it, I've had some, uh, orders from there I personally don't like the customers I get from marketplace um, they're kind of needy and they're always wanting like a discount um, but like I said one of our biggest um, things is putting our logo out there is putting our name out there is people like seeing jumps and tents on their page um, more than like actually um wanting a sale right off the bat and it's worked so far like people will some like ask for an order even though it's like two or three months down the road that i put that ad out or they'll be like hey aren't you that person that posted about interactive games like six months ago i was like we are we are that is us <laughs> and so they'll like put an order then um but yeah i we do that and then we do we post the same canva post on uh the small business groups that um are in the local community um and then we post it on our facebook page as well um all right any anybody else um what, what are you guys doing uh we've got two things now what's the third thing I very much agree with the Nahi's way of marketing and doing the um, brand. She does more branding than anything else. And that's, I think that the brand is very strong and I don't think we do enough branding in this business. Uh, that's a hundred percent of what I do. I don't do any marketing. I don't do any direct sales. I am 100% brand specific. I make absolutely ridiculous videos. I act like a complete and total idiot. And uh, it gets me sales. People, they don't just want to come. They don't, they're not looking for a bounce house. They're, they want to throw a party and have a party with the inflatable carnival and the corny carny. Cause that's, cause I'm fun. I'm like, the, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, put yourself out there. People like to see new things, I guess I should say, whatever. I put my stuff, I put my, uh, one thing we give out, 
which is cheap to do is stickers. We do stickers and I got some, there's the corny carny there and there's popcorn, the party where kids like, and I tell the kids, put this on something important. And then mom and dad's are scared. <laughs> But the stickers are real cheap and they're, uh, that's an easy thing to give away. And uh, something that we do at the end of a party or when we get done setting up right before the party starts is we uh, always find out the birthday boy or girl's name and we make a balloon dog, which is really easy to YouTube that. It doesn't cost anything at all. You make a balloon dog and you take a magic marker in, you write the little kid's name on the dog itself, set it in front of your bounce house and people will remember you for that. It costs absolutely nothing to do that. And it's just one more <laughs> thing to... Uh, put in front of your people it's just fun you know and i love that and i i i think uh we got uh from rob rob was was like hand the birthday boy a 50 cent coin yes for their birthday as a gift and they will remember you the only thing that i have an issue with that is that consistency um because if you have a different experience for your customer they're going to expect that and you're not always going to be able to train your guys. You could barely sometimes train them to clean the bounce houses, let alone remember <laughs> how to, you know, <laughs> make a balloon. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I think that's the, that's where I go back and forth about the experience that the customer gets. We want to go above and beyond, even if it's something little. But how consistent can we be with every single time that we show up? So on that note, for us to be consistent and not depend on people delivering. Actually, we write handwritten notes every Monday, right? <laughs> it's just a couple of sentences. And if it's a birthday boy, we say something to the birthday boy. But every Monday, we send out a handwritten note, right? That just kind of, that way you don't depend on an employee if they're in a good mood or in a bad mood or being, you know, funny enough or clever enough for the kid or having to do that. This way we can always just be consistent. Uh, people know it. We had repeated customers that actually reached out. Uh, whenever we went the second time, they were just thanking us for the handwritten note multiple times. And this is our first year, right? But just from like previous life experience, it's just like people don't expect anything handwritten. Like it has to be written by hand, right? Don't print it. Don't do that. Go buy $20 worth of, of cards and just send them out. And uh, that's kind of the always thing right now. And the envelope, there's our sticker, there's our logo, there's the whole thing. But it's that emotional aspect that why are people renting things, right? And it's just kind of, all right, let's put our brand and our name in front of it but that way. But that way we're not sending out very many different things. And I mean, everyone's going to open up their mail and they're going to kind of see this kind of thing. So it's kind of that repeated. And then in, in some cases we add our, our extra, our extra, uh, fridge magnet there you go i can't think of the word right but it's always handwritten note thank you for renting us thank you, you know, for helping us out from there uh and then if it's tommy's little birthday congratulations to tommy you know put a sticker in there uh and then just go from there put the magnet in there 40 uh, 59 cent investment definitely worth uh the extra rental from there you also reach out to them the next year around their birthday if they're young enough i guess or if they have siblings or anything like that well, we started in March, so we haven't had a time to go to the next year. Okay. But I'll let you know. I'll, I'll plan on it for sure. I was going to say, yeah, going to follow back up next year, especially with the young yeah. kids. My, you know, my daughter's six, so, you know, she's probably going to be enjoying the bounce houses for a few more years. Yeah. Do you guys have that um, on my website? We get We send out an email uh, nine months after the every event to remind them that the event might come up again and if they want to book. Do you guys have that? Do, does anybody do that? Uh, doesn't ERS do that, Ismail? Yeah, yeah, that's how I, yeah. Everybody does it automatically. Um, not everybody customizes those emails, which they should. Um, I was gonna talk about that. I do a lot of emails, uh, but we do a lot of targeted emails. So you do nine months, I also do 10 months, also do 11 months. I make sure we get them. And then if we haven't gotten them the third week, they're getting phone calls. We get them. Oh. What, what, what do you mean 11 months, 10 months, so, 12 months? I don't understand. You, you start sending out three so months that early? Mark, so remember I, I, I was on your ass for years to get on ERS 
And it's because I know you off, off Facebook. I know that you're a painter. I know that you're busy as hell. And, I, and that one thing I kept telling about the U.S. was I said, it automates the hell out of everything, man. So what she's talking about is an email. And, and I'll message you privately where it's at, okay? It's an email that ERS automatically sends out at nine months. Right, I have that. You have that, but you have to customize it. Hey, this is Mark the Moon, the Moon Man, blah, blah. It's, it's, your party's coming up. Let's, for the, for the best selection, book now with a link. Or here's a coupon for 10 bucks. Do whatever you, it takes. Okay, but hold up. But you, they send them out nine months in advance? Yeah. Nine so months out. So that, nine, sorry, yes, nine months out, correct. Nine months out. What I months in advance. Three months from the date, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I also send it out at 10 months, at 11 months, and then we start phone calls. Okay, okay, so you're saying it's only a couple months before the their actual party. It's not, yeah, you're not sending it out to the 11 months early, you're sending it out like three months early. No, is 10 months it? out after their last event is what he's saying. Okay, that's what I'm getting at, but I was kind of confused for a second. That's probably the old in me, I'm not sure. But It's the age. Uh, yeah. I, I was confused because I'm was hearing different numbers. I'm thinking you guys are sending out reminders nine months before their party. It's basically would be three party. months. Yes, but but it's actually three months, not nine months. Yeah, correct. Right. She, she meant to say okay, nine that's months. I was, yes, that's why I was getting confused. Now, Mark, confused. Most people only have one email. What I'm suggesting is do two emails, do three emails, then do phone calls. Get that customer. Um, I, I see Zach has got us a text here. We do not pay for Facebook. Um, Zach, can you explain to us what you post in the text for us, please? My internet's saying it's not that great, but for our Facebook, we don't pay ads. Uh, uh, most of the generics or organic stuff that we post uh, comes back good with food drives, coloring contests and all new product uh, posts. And whenever we do coloring contests, uh, that's something that uh, Corny Carney might be able to speak a little bit on with his characters. And guys, I, I think where we miss a lot of people too is where we, um, nobody does retargeting either. So what we do is we, we do it through Facebook and then we do it through uh, Google. We actually retarget people. So what we can do is we can, you know, through uh, and stuff like that, we can actually go back out and reach people. So say they went to our website three days ago, they never hit the checkout page. They're going to see an ad on Facebook. They're going to, you know, and we specifically say, hey, it's still time to book your party, you know, and then it, it kind of catches their attention and it's the same thing on Facebook too. So they're seeing our logo again and then they're having that chance to book because the reality of it is you lose a lot of traffic because they just don't book on your website the first time. Um, one thing I'm probably going to do as we're talking, we're talking about this is um, <clears throat> go to like uh, uh, local uh, grocery store and get a $50 gift card and do a giveaway for Thanksgiving um, and we'll give it to them on Wednesday or whatever and I mean it's a good way to give back to the community a good way to advertise for free um, and it just feels good to like give you know <laughs> um, so we do do a lot of giveaways and we found that it does you don't have to pay for an ad. You know, I'd rather give something away than pay Facebook for an ad. Who else do Facebook ads? And see, I, I, I kind of have to disagree with that statement because you could, you could spend that same $50 on that gift card and target people specifically, like I said, who have been to your website or specifically interested in your product and make so much more money than just giving out a, a $50 gift card to anyone and everyone that shares your post. That could possibly never be a customer or even have an interest. Of being yeah. A I feel like targeting, I do need to learn more about that because 
I do real I do realize that that's huge. Like you do have to target specifically on Facebook. Um, but sure. as far as like, it's like, I think I, I do dual purpose for the advertising and it's not just to be like, okay, I'm going to make more money. It's like, I want to treat my customers with something because they're the ones that put me in this position to begin with. You know what I mean? Um, and so, cause it's going to be people that go and like our Facebook page anyways. I agree. I feel like giving back is really important. So where we do use Facebook and we do do targeting, we do also do a lot of things for the community and a lot of, a lot of giveaways and that kind of stuff just to stay relevant. And, you know, so when somebody is ready to book, they immediately think of us. We host community events, you know, um, we donate to special causes and then things that are important to us. But uh, like throughout COVID, we gave away various gift cards to, to local restaurants and stuff just to kind of support, you know, them as our community was supporting us. Who belongs to the Chamber of Commerce in their area? I'm curious. I, I, I did it this year and it has more than paid off for, uh, uh, I've gotten a tremendous amount of gigs through the Chamber of Commerce. What about you guys? Anybody? Has okay. it paid off for you? We, we did it the first five years in business. The last 12 years we haven't. Um, uh, anybody that knows me that- Great situation. Um, uh, we are part of our chamber and a lot of people that I mentioned the chamber, they don't understand that you need to learn how to use it. It's so important to network because my biggest events have come from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, but if you're not a people person, you probably might not, it might not be your best fit. <laughs> right, because you, you need to be able to communicate with the people and you're going to have to do that if you're in the chamber. Yeah, so that's that's yeah. a guarantee. It's interesting. Chad, you put up your hand. Can you tell us what you've done? I didn't hear what he said. I'm asking for Chad too. He put up his hand. I want to see what he's got to say. Chad. Sorry, I was trying to find the unmute button. Uh, I, I did the Chamber of Commerce. I don't know that I got a ton of return on it. Um, I went to all the networking events and everything and people know who I am, but I only got one or two job, actual jobs I could tie to it, so. How long did you do it for? Two years. Now, I got, I got more from, I got more from my, uh, we have other smaller ne uh, business networking um, groups in my community. And I got more from that than I did the chamber events. Um, but that's, that, that, that's our area. Our chamber is very much a uh, good old boys club. If you haven't been there for 30 years and you know, uh, you're not the who's who, they don't really care. But if you go to the other smaller stuff, then the smaller networking stuff, that's where we got most of our stuff from. I don't have to pay for that. Okay. Yeah, we have where, a good chamber. <laughs> where are you at, Chad? How big a how big a place are you at, at town wise? I'm in Springfield, Missouri. Um, we have <clears throat> sorry, a couple hundred thousand people. All right. Um, let's hear from people that haven't said anything tonight. We have like twenty minutes left. Um, let's hear from you guys. I want, I want to give everybody a chance to say something. So let's speak up, please. Let's see. What have you done? <laughs> Nick, Nick, tell us what you've been doing. I'm going to call names, so let's go. Uh, I'm just listening in, guys. I'm doing some other works. I just, you know, I, I, I'm really just out of the game, uh, just listening in tonight. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, who's next? Russell. Hi, 
Has anyone ever tried any direct mail? Direct mail. His question is: Is there people that ask for direct uh, do direct mail? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> I've done I've done direct mail, and I would say that's probably one of my biggest returns on that kind of thing. Facebook and Google aside, that's probably one of my biggest returns is the direct mailers. I spend like 250 bucks on on uh, postage and another $250 on uh, pamphlet or something I send out people and I always get a couple grand back out of it. We used to send out thousands of postcards. I'm sure many of you have received them. The, the crazy wacky postcards, that was, that was how we got our name out there. It definitely paid off, um, especially with the, most of the people you know, getting their mail still, you still check your mail every day. So it's, it's still a pretty safe bet if you can make it stand out. Um, do you still get people that respond to that? How do you measure that? But that you know, normally they'll say, hey, I've got your crazy postcard in the mail. You know, what can you do with my insurance? And you're like, sure, yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about it. So we haven't done that in a while, but I remember when we did that, it definitely paid off. You know, it was a lot of hours, a lot of manpower. Me and my brothers licking stamps and putting, you know, labels on, but it paid off. I'm sure there's automated um, services that you can do online now. Um, well, now, yeah, not when we were kids. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see my dad sitting over you guys telling you to do it. <laughs> Go faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, yeah. I'll chime in, and I, I, I think, too, with a lot of us as business owners and, and really no budget to kind of hone in on our target market, I think a lot of us come up with an idea, and we think it's the best thing ever or the best ad ever or the best picture and text ever. And we actually never really check it or reach out to our, our target audience to see what they think of it. You know, I, I remember when we first started, we kind of, you know, combos and moonwalks and, you know, we, we just really overcomplicated things. I think a lot of people just still see them as bounce houses and water signs. You know, they don't really obstacle course or interactive game or a lot of people really don't know what a combo is without having to explain it. So I, I think a lot of times we just really, I hate to say this, but, you know, think our idea is the best and really never give it the time to reach out to parents, reach out to moms, reach out to school groups to see how they, you know, receive the message or if they know what it's about. So I, I think that's a, a, a big place that we fail as business owners as well is we really never test it with our target audience. But um, Corey, don't you think um, uh, last year and the year before when we started, we, we don't do those kind of things. And that's why this year is actually a good time, uh, if that is important to you, that you reach out to these people and ask them these questions. Because that's what we do right now too, is we revamp the thing and, and look at everything that we do and um, and test it and talk to people and see if what we do works because last year we couldn't keep up with all the work this year we need to really focus on it to get the work in and um, so maybe this is a good year to if you have this different ways of marketing um, to go and test it and see and ask the customers and measure it that you didn't have to because you were just too busy. So maybe this is a good and excellent uh, item that we can write down today and say we need to measure what we do so that uh, we can yes, thank you. so that we can um, uh, see what works and what doesn't work and we don't just throw a lot of money and time and into something that doesn't really give us a, a, a return. So any suggestions on how you can actually test it um, with your customers? Like we use Facebook. We're very interactive with our customers. We ask them, do you like this combo bouncer or this combo bouncer? We're going to purchase one of these two in the next month. How else could we 
see what they like or don't like? Uh, for, for us, what we do is we actually, uh, my wife's actually part of a mom's group. And that's kind of how we get a lot of our feedback. And I, I think you have to remember too, with your, with your Facebook page, if you're asking your customers, they're already your customer. So they already know, know what you do, know what it is that you do. And you, it's, and you have to, I, I, does that make sense at all? If, if someone's already buying a Mercedes, they know what a Mercedes is. So it doesn't have to be explained to them. Whereas if you've never bought a Mercedes, you have to market to them a little differently. Because, well, what's wrong with my Toyota? Why is it not as good as the Mercedes? Does, does that make sense? So that's where Corey, we get a lot of it. But, Corey, but if they're your, already your customer and our business is built on repeat business for the next 10 years of a children's you know, birthday party, isn't that someone's opinion you ma that you want to factor in a lot? Because I hear what you're saying. I don't own a Mercedes, so sell me on it. But if I already own one, don't you want me as a continued customer for the next 10 years, year after year, for my two other kids? You already got me once. Don't you want my opinion? And see, so there, there's the difference, too, is so now the reality is you need to have a message for, guess what? Your current customers and then a message for somebody who you want to be your customer. Got it. So two different ads. You need two different opinions. Okay. But that, the question also matters because Anai just mentioned, hey, you're, you're asking a question, but you asked a leading question, right? Like you're asking me a question where you already have expecting an answer without really getting my input. Like you're asking me A or B, right? But you're not asking me the more open and their answer, right? That you're going to be able to, to really hear their point of view and their opinion, right? It, so that's, that, that's very important. Don't ask leading questions. Ask open-ended questions where you can really get feedback and also see what people, what questions people are asking you. Uh, you learn a lot more from somebody by the question they ask you like, than their actual answers they give you because now you're seeing how they're understanding things. For sure. Like, For sure. how do you guys make that decision on what's the next item to buy? How are, how are you guys on this group making that next decision? Like, I went to IAPA last year and I was so close to buying a launcher machine, a pinata basically. And I posted it on Facebook. There was crickets. I mean, nobody was interested at all. So I didn't get it. But then like I talked about the phone machine and everybody was like raving about it. So like, how are you guys deciding what the next thing to buy is? Has your phone machine actually done well for you? It's done very, very well. It paid itself off in like a month and a half. Okay. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I think, I don't know if I say it right, but let's leave that question for the next time when we talk about equipment and things like that. Uh, I would like to keep this for the next 20, 20 minutes to advertising and what we do around marketing and advertising. So um, let's focus on that for tonight because that is our uh, topic for the night too. Um, uh, Jeff, um, I, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Oh, wow. That's awful nice of you, Cobus. Um, for some reason, I've, I've tried all of the stuff that we've all talked about on the previous people here, the magnets, the postcards, the trifold brochures, the... Um, Google ads obviously has still been the best. I feel like social media is just where I lack. I feel like I'm missing. I have a pretty good following, but I don't post enough and I don't feel like, I feel like I'm missing. I feel like that segment of the market is something that I'm missing and I'm just trying to get my head around that. Um, I don't do anything, like I said, out of the ordinary, out of what everybody else has already mentioned. Um, now, the one thing I did want to mention on that magnet we do the magnets too, but I think Rob Weinstein from ERS had mentioned you kind of treat them like gold. Don't go out when you've got a customer, don't go out and hand them 20 magnets. Make them feel like they're a little special. Give them one, maybe two, and then on that magnet, there's like a $10 coupon. So, they got, yeah, they're going to stick it on their, their fridge, but it also has a $10 coupon on them. We've done that for the last couple of years, and we get several of those um, which aren't, you know, uh, redeemed in, in the software. So I know that works for sure. 
but I'd love to hear someone if they've uh, got some advice or, or um, you know, have perfected the social media <laughs> game. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. It looks a lot cheaper, it seems like, than Google Ads, but I, it's, I don't know. I can't get it. I can't get it. I got a quick question for you about your uh, magnet with the coupon on it. Do you have an expiration date for the coupon for the $10 off? No. Or do they just call back every year and say, I have your magnet and it's yeah. $10 off on it? Don't even collect it. I mean, if they, they can type in the code and we get we put a code on there. And, oh, so there's a code on it. Okay, got it. So yeah, they yeah. Because they well, they auto, they, they automatically book through ERS a lot of times, so I don't even – I mean, I never talk to them. So I, I don't care if it expires. I and mean, if they come back and book, who cares, right? Yeah, you've already got them as a customer. You have already paid for that, so who cares? Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing with social media is we have to remember, too, why do you use social media? You, why do it, I use social media? I, well, I'm, you know, to keep in, to keep in touch with my family right? back in Illinois and whatnot. Keep, you know, I got to see what the Joneses are doing, keeping up with the Smiths next door. For entertainment, though, right? You don't get right. on Facebook to buy something or to search to buy something, right? So I, I, I think that's kind of an issue, too, is I think a lot of us just use it to sell, sell, sell versus actually entertain people. So... Well, we've actually started um, at Spoil Me Rotten a meet the staff where every day we're putting something personal on our Facebook page, um, a new member of our staff, tell them a little bit about themselves, making it personable, putting pictures of them with their kids, their family, just to make it more engaging and more personable with our customers. Does that, do you have any idea if that turns into leads or are you just... You're just trying to well, go. we just started it, so we're not entirely sure yet. Um, this is just something that um, an idea I come up with last week. So every day we've been putting a new staff member on there. I mean, we've been getting a lot of feedback, um, a lot of comments, a lot of interaction, um, and stuff like that from the people yeah. that follow the page. I see. And Corey, I, I, I wonder about that. I wonder if I'm worried too much that I'm missing missing out on the social media and the entertainment part, and maybe I'm just barking up the wrong tree. Maybe maybe that's not where you're getting a bunch of sales from Facebook. You know, I don't, I don't know. That's why I was interested to see what everybody else had to say. For sure. I, I, I think the best money spent would be setting up a good retarget campaign. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Then, oh, you know, running a, right. a targeting campaign. Right. Have you guys ever tried an Instagram campaign instead of Facebook? No. I think if when you do uh, Facebook, um, you can send it as advertising on Instagram too. Do they, yeah. Does Facebook own Instagram or? Uh, yeah. 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 So. Yeah, my, you said your campaign, you can push it to one or the other. My um, Instagram ones never do anything. I mean, and I'm not sure why, because you'd think the target market would be on Instagram, but I think they're a little too young still on Instagram. It's not in our demographics yet. I could be off it's on that. It's starting to trend that way. You have a lot more, I want to say older people, but, you know, people how, how Facebook are, you, are starting to use Instagram. I'm almost 30, so I'm like right on the edge there of like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but where do you live at? Uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. So, um, Alex, you're then a good one to ask, uh, where does your wife go when she needs to look for something like that? Where does she go? What is her go-to social media? Well, that's what I'm saying is if, if somebody was advertising on Instagram, you know, for our six-year-old, you know, it'd be very easy for her to just swipe up and go to your website or go to wherever it is that your landing page is. Because I feel like for our generation, or at least, you know, younger 30s late 20s they're going to be on instagram more so than than facebook for most likely so if you ever had you know kids which a lot of us do you know it's, it's a lot easier to just go on instagram and swipe up That's, i i do it there i do it there because i think that it's going that way to instagram and those i just don't think it's quite there yet so like whenever i do my ads uh, I still, I'm active on Instagram. Of what I see, I'm probably more active than anyone else is on Instagram just because I think it's going towards that type of thing. People want to consume images and videos. Mm -hmm. I just I, I just don't see a huge return yet, but I do think it will be there. What about Alex? What about Pinterest? Can you ask your wife what she uses more, Pinterest or Instagram? Oh, Instagram for sure. 
she, I mean, she had Pinterest. That used to be probably like her go-to, but I'd say now it's it's Instagram for sure. Does she do a lot of hashtag searches or um, hashtag, whatever they're called, rabbit trails, rabbit holes with the hashtags? She normally doesn't. I don't think she does. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I don't even know. I hope not. But you know, she <laughs> um, you know, she has her way of finding things. I'm like, where'd you find this? She's like, oh yeah, I got an Instagram ad or something. You're like, oh, okay, well. I guess they're targeting us for this crazy stuff, but if it was for a bounce house for a birthday party, I mean, I, we'd be easy targets. On that note, can I kind of bring back up what, what Corey said earlier that we mentioned targeting. So there's targeting and there's also retargeting, right? So I think that's kind of being lost at some point in the conversation, right? There's Corey, also explaining a little bit, retargeting a little bit, please. Corey, can you go in? Um, yeah, sure. So, so targeting is, I, I would say targeting is almost throwing like a big 20 foot net out there. And then retargeting is almost throwing a smaller net within that big net. You know, you've, you've already caught the people. So that would be retargeting. Like say if uh, Ishmael went to my website, I could actually follow him around for the next seven days, as long as he didn't reach my checkout page to try to hit him again. You can, you can also do uh, mirrored audiences off of your retarget as well, which is pretty fantastic. For sure, so that goes out and it looks for people who are like your customers, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. Does that answer your question, Alejandro? Yes, sir. All right. I, th I think uh, speaking on the in Instagram thing, I think from what I see, it, I think it's hard to come up with a very uh, appealing Instagram ad. Um, people tend to, to post uh, you know, just a picture of the inflatable or something like that and run it as an ad. And I don't think that's as appealing. So people just kind of scroll through it. It, it. You have to come up with something that like tells people what they're doing with that image, or with that inflatable. Hey, an obstacle course? Oh man, that would be awesome. If you had an obstacle, you could get some amazing content out of that. Yeah. I, I think the first thing you have to do is number one, tell them what problem you're solving of theirs too. You, uh, I know Michael Burt, uh, Coach Burt, that's always what he used to say is that's when money switches hands is when a problem's being solved. So that's kind of how we tend to lead all of our ads. Corey, can you repeat? Can you repeat that again? What did he say? When does it convert? When does the money change hands? When a problem is solved. When a problem is solved. Um, any other questions? Um, so, Corey, what problem are you solving? A lean birthday party. No one wants that for their kids. You're right. Getting getting the kids out of your hair. Great tight line. We avoid lame bird parties. Yeah, that's a, so enough. That's kind of how we do our retargeting is, you know, almost don't let your next event flop or, you know, it's still time to book a uh, lame party. Nobody wants to be the lame parent. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions, other, other thoughts? Um, there's a few of you guys that haven't said anything. So uh, do you have any questions or any thoughts uh, for the group? Coach, I would like to ask Beverly a follow-up question um, on her pens that she does. Uh, I believe her last name was Paget, Beverly Paget. Paget. Do you, I don't even know if she's still here. Um, right did, okay, are your pens individually in plastic or how do you how do you do that with the pens i put them inside of a clipboard and tell the customer here's your paperwork uh there's a pen inside the clipboard and it's yours to keep when you hand the clipboard and paperwork back to me keep the pen okay do you know if the company you get them from uh, gives you an option of each pen coming in individually wrapped you know, a little sleeve, a little plastic sleeve. You know, you know? I didn't even look that up. I, I, that wasn't even a thought that I had. Right. Um, I mean, I'm sure that would be more of an expense. Uh, I mean, not much more of an expense, but, you know, it would be more of a... Because 
like nowadays, if you're going to give somebody something, you want it to be sanitized. So if it's in a, I mean, I'm just asking if that was an option because I'm actually going to look that up. I'm probably going to start looking as soon as we get off this meeting because yeah, I think that that's actually. Happen? And I think somebody put the link there in this in the group. So it's national pens, and it probably is an option. It's just not one I thought of. Right. I, I just I just was wondering. I mean, I I uh, I just know here in my area where I'm at. I'm. I mean, I don't mean to sound crude, I guess, or anything, but my area is a very wealthy retirement type area. We've got like 180,000, 179,000 people in my county. Uh, it's maybe 30 miles across, and they want cleanliness. They want, you know, they want their grandkids that, that are going to be the future millionaires of the grandpas, you know, to have a clean bounce house and whatever I bring there. So I'm just was curious if there was an option for that bag, because if a pen is wrapped, I think my customers at least would be like, okay, this is really awesome. You know, they have their own pen and it markets the name, which you've done. I think you said it's silly. It's simple. I think it's great. I think you did a great thing with that, uh, doing that. So, but I just want to ask you if you knew about the option. That's all. Thank you. so much. I, I don't. So hmm. national pen, they may have it for you though. Okay, Zach, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, bulletin boards, uh, six what? Two mile radius of us. Every every bulletin board has uh, our business card and one of our promotion flyers. Um, Mike, do you have something to add? Um, I would say listen to Jana and Jennifer. And why should we listen to them? Because they're movers that get stuff done. No, okay. I've been listening. I was in the car for a good part of the time, so that's why I wasn't have a black screen. I'm just listening. Um, so I definitely think I, I, we had a great summer. I think it's because I, I did take the time to go through and make sure all my keywords were right. Um, uh, Corey, was it you that did the 30 some days of th things to improve on each day? Was that Corey that did that earlier in the summer? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Corey, for that. That certainly got my ass to doing that. So definitely make sure you, cause that's the easy stuff, even though it's kind of boring. Um, I would be interested to know what uh, website analyzers I had, have used. Um, oh, gosh, can they name it now? I guess it wasn't that great. But uh, if there's any sort of website analyzers that are, people like to use as far as measuring how well you're doing on your SEO, making sure your keywords are correct or not duplicates and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Hey, Mike, did, have you used the SEO ability? I think that's the one that I used that you did. Yeah, I did use that. And they gave me a free, I don't know, free month or so. And I went to cancel and they gave me another free month or two free months. And then they wanted to give me a cheap, at that time, things were going great. I didn't, I wasn't spending any time. I still get a weekly ranking. Um, from them for for both the mobile and desktop and that's an interesting and most of the time i was number one, number one except uh for some reason i don't do very well when it comes to bounce house <laughs> so i guess i need to work on that i usually come up second place on that so is that all in all you think a pretty good tool to be using yeah <laughs> I think so. I, I think Google changes so much too. I mean, it's it's really moving more towards just good, actual, readable content as well. Yeah. So you know, back back in the day, you could just hit your your homepage with eight hundred bounce house, you know, city name tags, and you'd rank it. But anymore, I mean, it's just moving straight to good readable content. So yeah, and Cobus, that might be a good topic one week is how to manage your SEO and what things you can do yourself, especially for a good group chunk of us 
up north who are basically slow right now. Unlike you, uh, you poor people down in Florida and Texas. Really uh, sucks for you right now. You guys are missing out 39 degree weather. It was a chilly 80 degrees here today in Florida. Oh, I feel, I feel <laughs> your pain. Uh, all right, uh, guys, it's 8.30. Um, if you guys want to hang out and talk about something else, um, you're welcome to do what you want to do. I'm going to stop the recording. And um, the table is open now to discuss whatever you guys want to discuss. Um, and um, if, if you want to leave, you're welcome to leave. Otherwise, next week, Monday, we're going to be at the same time, same place. And um, I, I want to ask you guys, if you get something that you um, out of this group, please tell the other people to come in. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to let 30 people next time. I'm probably going to split it in two. It seems like um, when we get to 30, there's too many people in here and we don't get everybody to, um, to participate. My whole goal with this is that we get people to participate. Um, I've always believed uh, even if you are first year in the business or 50 years in the business, you're never too old to learn from anybody. So my philosophy my whole life was being, I, I always listen to people who start or whatever because um, they might just think a thing that I forgot or I don't know or whatever. There's no, nobody in this world that know all the answers, trust me. And um, I, I would like to use this platform to get everybody a voice to ask their questions. And I would like for it to be uh, non-confrontational, you know, um, care confrontational is the right word, that we help each other and um, uh, um, help the other ones grow no matter where they're at in the, the, the chain of um, business. Um, so ask other people to come in. And I think when we go over 25, next time I'll probably split it in two groups of uh, 17 or 17 or 15 and 15, whatever the case may be, um, so that we can help everybody to um, say what they want to say and ask the questions. Uh, well done. Tonight was a success. I learned a lot. I sat in the car most of the day. I just got home, but thank you. This was amazing. Anybody else? Oh, you guys want to just hang out and uh, keep talking. Um, now the floor is open. I'm not going to moderate it. Um, if you want to say something, you just start to talk. And, um, and I want this, to, uh, the next part of it is to enjoy, you know, talk to each other, hang out, ask each other whatever questions. And um, um, you can turn on your mic or whatever and just keep going, right? Is that good? Sure. All right. Thanks, Will. I'm going to get something to drink. <laughs> no, and, and that's not alcohol. <laughs> uh -huh. that think, um, not, not us, not alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Night, guys. See you.